What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. I'm not gonna lie, I'm trying to not have viruses at the forefront of my mind right now, but it's quite hard not to when all I see, read and dream about is freaking COVID-19. And I know you all agree with me, but say la vie you guys, we're gonna get through it together. I'm sure most of us are low-key dying of cabin fever right now, but together we will get through this. And that's why I should be Miss Universe 2020. Thank you. Well, enough of my bullshit. These are the top 10 scary new viruses that could wipe out the world. Starting off with number 10 is COVID-19. Obviously, I had to put Corona at number 10 since it is the one disease plaguing the world right now and it's the newest one by far. By now, we should know the symptoms of this highly contagious disease are very similar to those of a common cold. Sniffles, blocked nose, coughing, fever, and in bad cases, pneumonia in both lungs. But individuals can suffer from no symptoms at all and still test positive, so it's very up in the air. When the virus attacks your lungs, it attacks the membranes inside them and it can affect anyone no matter what age they are, but obviously it's proven to be more fatal for the elderly and people with compromised immune systems. Vaccines have started being tested on human volunteers, so I mean, let's hope we do find a cure and can just come out of quarantine happy, but cures take years to find and years to test, so I don't know. Coming in at number 9 is Asian Longhorn Tick Disease. Dr. Richard Ostfeld claims as climate change worsens and the population of ticks increase, it's only about time that a new tick-borne disease or diseases will emerge. The Asian Longhorn Tick was recently found in New Jersey and no one knows how it got there. This specific tick can carry and transmit deadly viral pathogens and apparently the ticks have been in the US for a few years now. While the deadly pathogen it's been known to carry hasn't turned up any human cases in North America yet, it's only about time. Maybe the fact we're in quarantine right now will slow that process down because we sure as do not need another deadly virus going around. Am I right? I'm right. At number eight, we have the Arctic permafrost. With climate change looming over us like the cloud of isolation of daily life, many animals, or their corpses rather, are re-emerging after being frozen in permafrost for however many thousands of years. And with ancient old animals turning up, that brings up the possibility of old viruses resurfacing that we aren't equipped to handle. Scientists have already found the locked up DNA of a 30,000 year old giant virus in Siberian ice, and nothing in this world is a better preserver than ice. Not even the mental notes you can take when your boy is acting up, let me tell you. Now the virus they found doesn't seem to be a threat to humans, thank god, but that doesn't mean there won't be another virus that shows up in a few years that won't be. Even the anthrax outbreak in Russia was dormant in a reindeer and it was spread due to the thawing permafrost. So in conclusion, global warming will get us one way or another. If coronavirus doesn't, global warming will. That's an inevitable. Filling on the seventh slot is E. coli, and I don't just mean regular E. coli, I mean antibiotic resistant E. coli. Now, the E. coli bacteria usually lives in the gut or intestines of animals, and obviously, since we eat them, it makes its way into us. We can also get it from unpasteurized milk, fruits, and veggies that have been cleaned with tainted water, and so forth. Symptoms set in two to five days after transmission, and it starts with diarrhea, which could be bloody. Then comes nausea, abdominal cramps, and you may or may not have a fever. Now, for Unfortunately, this just usually goes away on its own, but now it's becoming more antibiotic resistant. Antibiotics are pumped into animals and we also take them all the time for our own illnesses. In 2017, 23,000 people died because of untreatable infections, so imagine the ones we are able to treat becoming resistant. That number is going to shoo up like nobody's business and it's not like we're waiting for them to emerge, they're very much already here, waiting to kill us. Now, number six is Zika virus. Despite first being discovered in 1947, the Zika virus sort of lay fairly lowish until 2007 when it started spreading eastward, leading to the 2015 2016 Zika virus epidemic. You can get it through female mosquitoes who are infected, you can transmit it sexually, through blood transfusion, and usually a child will have it if their mum has tested positive for it. Now, usually there are no symptoms, but when you do start seeing them, it'll start off with something resembling dengue fever. You'll have joint pain, rashes, red eyes, and that will last for around a week or so. A vaccine for the virus started being developed in 2016, but claimed they wouldn't be available for another 10 years, and it's like, bish, we don't have time to wait that long. As of 2017, the vaccine went to clinical trials, so I mean, maybe we won't have to wait till 2026, but you never know in this day and age. Coming in at number five is the new mosquito-borne virus, because apparently the tiny blood-sucking 
weren't satisfied enough with just giving us malaria. Again, because of climate change, places that used to be relatively dry are now experiencing excessive rain and warmer, more humid conditions. That weather pattern shift could result in mosquitoes migrating elsewhere, which could then lead them to feeding on new hosts, meaning people and domestic or wild pets. Hosts all carry different viruses, and those could mix inside a mosquito and create a new novel pathogen that we are not ready for. And they're usually highly contagious, just like Ebola was. And number four is the flu. I know this isn't new and I know it's been around since the times of colonization, but the flu is more deadly than COVID. It causes three to five million severe cases annually and it kills anywhere from 290,000 to 650,000 people a year as well. Between 2019 till now, 22 people caught it and that's just in the US alone, so imagine how much larger the number actually is. There's no treatment for the flu and honestly, if it got as much importance and attention as COVID, a lot less people would be dying. And what if the flu mutates or becomes even more antibiotic resistant? What the hell do we do then? The link on the free slot is monkeypox, and I didn't even know that was a thing, but I guess we're all just learning something new. This virus spreads from someone handling bush meat from an animal bite or scratch, coming in contact with an infected animal's fluids, or just coming into contact with an infected person. Despite it being called monkeypox, it's mostly spread by rats in Central and West Africa, so I mean false advertisement much. Now looks-wise, it's very similar to smallpox and chickenpox, and it's believed that the smallpox vaccine can actually prevent you from getting it altogether. Symptoms include muscle pains, fever, swollen lymph nodes, blistering rashes, and extreme lethargy. Symptoms show up 5 to 20 days after exposure and can last nearly two months. Bit of a history lesson for you, it was first discovered among lab monkeys in 1958, but the first human cases came years later in 1970 in Congo. An outbreak even occurred in the US in 2003, and the source was traced back to a pet store selling imported rats from Gambia. The death rate of the virus is 10%, but the hard part of it is that it can't be detected during blood tests because it doesn't stay in your blood very long, so it's quite hard to detect and find. Now, number two are nanoparticles. As you can imagine, they are extremely small particles that are being used in basically everything in modern medicine, in eyewear, in, in drugs, in food dyes. They even play a part in saving lives in regards to medical testing and treatment. However, and you knew there was going to be a however, research has shown that they can actually have immunotoxic effects on us and change the function of our immune systems. They can either enhance its function or inhibit it, and not enough research has been done on its use, so whatever does happen is highly unpredictable let alone solvable. Nanoparticles can cause inflammation, they can cross cell barriers no problem, and can cause DNA damage in places most viruses can't reach. With their newfound widespread use, it could slowly but surely be the silent killer none of us saw coming. Dun dun dun. More deadly than a silent and deadly thought. And finally, and number one is Hantavirus. On March 25th, a new death was reported in China from a virus completely separate from COVID-19. An unnamed man was traveling on a bus and then abruptly died after testing positive for hantavirus. The fellow 32 passengers were also being tested and it was confirmed that two people on the bus started developing fever-like symptoms, which is not a good sign. I mean, this virus isn't technically new since it's been around since the 50s, however, recent cases have been far and few between. The man was from the city of Lincoln, where authorities have begun screening and monitoring precautions just in case. Hantaviruses like COVID are a family of viruses that spread mainly by rats and other rodents. It's always the bloody rats, isn't it? If transmitted, symptoms include fever, dizziness, chills, and abdominal pain, and can cause hemorrhagic fever with renal symptoms and also hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. Thankfully, the virus is not airborne, so it's not as contagious and easily spreadable as coronavirus, but if a person touches the poop, saliva, or urine of an infected rodent, then I mean, what do I tell you? If left untreated, it can be fatal with a mortality rate of 38%. And that is it for today's video, guys. I know you probably wanted to see something more positive, but Here's a reality check for you. The world is not a positive place right now. But having said that, do try to stay positive yourself. I've recently found my groove once again in quarantine, so I'm happy about that. I hope you guys are keeping well. I've been your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.